Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. Just let me put that down for a moment because today I want to talk about timing. It's all about the timing. 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 The timing. 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 Dad, shh. Oh, sorry. Timing. Oh, wait, no, that's not a clock. Timing. Timing of the Bristol Hercules valve timing. That's what I want to talk about today. So I'm going to teleport back to the shed and show you what we're up to. Right, okay, here we are back in the shed. So what we're doing is we're setting the valve timing of the uh, Bristol Hercules single cylinder engine that we're making. And how are we going to do that? Right, so first thing to do was to get rid of the compression plate because that was breaking the, the valve timing and I'll explain why in a tick. We've taken the crankshaft assembly over there, out, and just made a dummy mandrel so we can fit the Tommy bar and we can turn the crankshaft, uh, a, a reference crankshaft which is just an arbitrary degree wheel. So we know that the relation of the degree wheel of the crankshaft to the sleeve, we can measure all of that. We can measure things like when the inlet valves start to open and we can measure things like when the exhaust valves uh, finally close just up there and we can read off at the time where the degree wheel is what that what that point of point of the valve opening the valve closing is in terms of degrees before or after top dead center on the crankshaft excuse me just had to get my breath back there because this teleport business does not have knock it out of you so what we needed to do was to get back to the standard Bristol Hercules valve timing which is here so this is the valve timing of the Hercules <coughs> we've got a uh, four stroke uh, engine so if we started on compression we come around here bottom dead center then we've got the exhaust cycle then we've got the induction cycle then we've got the compression cycle ready again at the top of compression so I'll start on compression and standard Hercules once we have ignition of the mixture we've got the power stroke down here the exhaust valve opens at 55 degrees before bottom dead center this information I have from the Bristol manuals. I also found a, a bit of an online thread in the model engine makers forum where um, <clears throat> I didn't read the information properly and uh, it was a completely different set at the time. All, all the values were half. Um, but the, the guys on that forum, really friendly, very helpful. They sorted that out for me. So um, if, if you ever get a chance, I would recommend you have a look because uh, they're, they're a, good, a good bunch by all accounts. So 55 degrees before bottom dead center, that's when the exhaust valve opens and the, the mixture can be start to expel. So as the um, crankshaft returns up on the exhaust stroke, at 55 degrees before top dead center, the inlet valve opens and the exhaust valve doesn't close until 15 degrees after top dead center. And this area of overlap, I've sort of shaded it in a bit there. It's not really symmetrical around top dead center. And a lot of engines, that area of overlap is perhaps a little bit slimmer and it's symmetrical around top dead center. So that's a bit we're a little bit concerned around. And then we carry on uh, down um, inducting the mixture and the, the inlet valve doesn't close until 55 degrees after bottom dead center. Then we compress the mixture and we're back around the cycle again. That's standard Bristol timing. Now the issue that we had, when we had a compression plate in there, it was lifting the barrel with relation to the sleeve, which doesn't move because the sleeve is attached to the drive uh, pin on the crankshaft, uh, the sleeve drive crank here. So, so the valves in the, the ports in the sleeve were lining up with the ports in the head much earlier. And we found that the um, exhaust was opening about 90 degrees before bottom dead center and the inlet wasn't closing until 90 degrees before top dead center. So we'd lose a lot of the power on the power stroke and we'd lose a lot of the compression on the compression stroke. And I don't even think the engine would probably have run with those timings. So we've had to get rid of the compression plate. We are fitting a, a washer, <coughs> sorry, a gasket. So that the piece of brass there is the thickness of the copper that we're going to use for the gasket. And the reason we're putting the gasket in was after we machined the, the barrel, the sleeve was just protruding above the top of the head and it would have contacted the, 
uh, sorry, ab above the top of the barrel and it would have contacted the head so that would be no good. So, so we wanted to, to put something in to make sure that when the sleeve's right at the top it doesn't go above the level of the barrel and smash into the head. So that's all done and we, we can now reliably get the standard Bristol Hercules timing and we can time that by looking at the wheel as we turn the handle. Fantastic. So, so we've got back to standard but this overlap was a bit of a concern so what we've decided to do is to retard all of the timings by 10 degrees. So if we start with the power stroke this means that the exhaust valve won't open now until 45 not 55, 45 degrees before bottom dead center. The inlet valve won't open now until 45 degrees before top dead center on the exhaust stroke. Uh, and the exhaust valve won't close until um, 25 degrees after top dead center. So what we've got, this, this overlap is slightly more symmetrical. We've got perhaps a little bit more power, perhaps a little bit less compression, but that's good because by removing the compression plate, the compression has gone up. And, and if we can lower that compression again through the valve timing, it, it saves us a bit of an issue later. If we still have a high compression, we, we've got to measure it, but on, on paper, it's getting up towards 10 to one. And with an alley rod, that's quite high. What we plan to do is to fit a gasket between the head and the barrel, and that would also serve to lower the compression because it moves the head and the rings up there. Uh, the only thing to watch if we do that is we don't want the sleeve to descend past the rings in the junk head. So that's, that's something that um, I think we I think we're okay with I don't think we're over overly compressed on that so how are we going to actually do this well now that we've got the timing of the sleeve relative to an arbitrary disc with timing marks on a dummy mandrel what we'll do is we will set this to absolute top dead center there on the degree wheel and when that's at top dead center the sleeve will be 10 degrees retarded from top dead center, this just a pencil mark. So if we find a way of marking accurately the position of this crank with relation to the uh, engine case, when we take out the dummy mandrel and we fit the, the proper crankshaft in, we can measure top dead center on the piston and we can put the sleeve drive crank rel relative to the timing mark that we devise here, put the sleeve in the right position so it's 10 degrees behind the crankshaft, then we're, we're good as good as gold. That's how we're going to time the exhaust of the engine, sorry, the, all of the valves of the engine, and that's how we're going to do it. So that's the plan, that's the next job, but today we're off to the victory show. Um, so it's not gonna do much today. It's, it's a local sort of uh, wartime show, and it should be, should be really good fun. Bit of a longer video than I thought, but uh, I haven't got time for this. <laughs> the, thanks for watching as ever. Enjoy the comments, and uh, look forward to the, the next update.